Hello everyone. Welcome back to Analog Snippets. You may be aware that there are three fundamental switching regulator topologies. Step down or so called buck regulator, step up or so called boost regulator, and step up down or so called buck boost regulator. The fundamental buck boost topology is inverting and that means polarity of the output voltage is opposite of that of input voltage. The buck topology is step down topology that means the output voltage is always less than input voltage. In case of boost V out is always more than input voltage. And in case of buck boost it can be either less or more than input voltage. And since IBB is inverting we are here talking about absolute voltages. Now this begs a question why there is three and only three fundamental topologies. So in this video we will try to answer just that question. And in that process we'll hope to get a better understanding of switching regulators as well. So let's begin. All these topologies have two things in common. They all have DC input voltage and they all have a big capacitor at the output. We can also assume V out to be another DC voltage for our analysis. And it is a fair assumption if your regulator is working properly. We also have a third DC node and it is ground. Now these topologies are known as fundamental because they use just one inductor. One end of this inductor is connected to one of the three DC sources and other end switches between the other two DC voltages. And from here you can appreciate the reason why there are three and only three fundamental topologies. And the reason is there are three DC voltages in this structure. And hence there are only three possible ways that one end of the inductor can connect to a DC voltage. Let's call one end of the inductor as fixed end and other end as switching end. If the fixed end is connected to V out that is our buck converter. If fixed end is connected to V in that will be boost converter. And if the fixed end is connected to ground that will be buck boost. In fact looking at the fixed end of inductor is the easiest way to find out which type of regulator topology it is. If inductor is directly connected to output it is buck, if it is directly connected to input it is boost and if it is directly connected to ground it is inverting buck boost. Next we need to place a switch such that energy can be transferred from the input DC source to inductor. In case of buck if switch is on the inductor is connected between input and output. In this mode energy flows from input to output and it also energizes the inductor in process. In case of boost and IBB inductor is connected between input DC source and ground. In switching regulator universe this period is known as T on period. During T on the absolute current of inductor ramps up linearly. As a final step we need to place a diode which will catch the switching end of inductor when switch is turned off. The polarity of diode should be such that it is off during T on. In case of buck the switching end swings down. In case of boost it swings up. And in case of IBB it swings down. So let's put a diode and complete the circuit. So here we are. Take some time to convince yourself that diode is indeed off during T on. Notice that in all three cases between V in and V out we have three elements. An inductor, a switch and a diode. Sometimes these three elements are grouped together and this cell is known as LSD cell. Here L stands for inductor, S for switch and D for diode. This diode is also known as freewheeling diode or catch diode. Next we will try to understand why a particular topology is necessarily step up or step down or inverting step up step down. So we have three DC voltages and no two DC voltages are equal to each other. Let's call these voltages as high voltage or HV, medium voltage or MV or low voltage or LV. Now recall the inductor volt second balance from video number 48. This rule says that in steady state average voltage across inductor must be zero. Now we know that one end of the inductor is connected to one of the DC voltage and other end swings between the other two. Now how many ways there are that both of these things can be true simultaneously. So let's perform a thought experiment. Let's connect the fix into the lowest DC voltage. Then switching in must switch between high voltage and medium voltage. 
Can this make average voltage across inductor zero? If we assign certain polarity to the inductor voltage VL, then in this case VL is always positive. And this is because both MV and HV are higher than LV. So this will not work. You can similarly convince yourself that if we connect the fix into HV, that will also not work. Because in this case, both MV and LV are lower than HV. The only way it can be made to work is if fixed end of inductor is connected to MV. In this scenario, if switching end is connected to HV, the VL is positive. And if it is connected to LV, the VL is negative. And now we have possibility that we can make average voltage across inductor zero across the whole cycle. So there is the important takeaway of this discussion. The fixed end of the inductor is always connected to the middle voltage. So with this insight, let's go back to our fundamental topologies. In case of Buck, fixed end of inductor is connected to V out. So that must be the middle voltage. And the other instance between V in, which is higher than V out and ground, which is lower than V out. In case of boost, the fixed end is connected to input voltage. So that must be the intermediate voltage in that case. And in case of IBB, the fixed end is ground. So with a positive input voltage, the only way to satisfy the inductor volt second balance is to make V out negative. So we can see that there is a nice intuitive feel to all this. It's very much like a pendulum or a swing with one end pivoted to the fixed place and other end swinging either way of that fixed place. So I hope this gives you an intuitive feel of why a particular topology is the way it is. Before I end this video, I want to highlight another interesting point. We can convert a buck or a boost into IBB with rather some simple modifications. Let's first consider a buck topology. Consider what happens if we swap V out with the ground. Please note that I'm keeping the battery ground as it is. So in this case, during T on, the inductor is connected between V in and ground. And with these polarities, VL is positive. So during T off, the VL should be negative. So with this simple change, we have converted a buck regulator into inverting buck boost regulator. You can convince yourself that this is exactly the same circuit we have been drawing so far. It is just different element placement. Okay, now let's consider the boost regulator. In this case, consider what happens if we swap the ground at the input side. In this case, Vn becomes negative voltage. So switching node of inductor becomes negative when switch is on. And hence it has to become positive when switch is off. Notice that this is also a type of inverting bug boost converter. Just in this case, input is negative and output is positive. So it is still inverting. So the end result is that you can take most of the bug or boost regulator ICs and with some simple modification, convert it to an inverting bug boost IC. So this is all I wanted to discuss in this video. So post your comments below and thanks for watching.